On Tuesday, New York Governor Kathy Hochul celebrated Indian Independence Day at Queens Museum in New York. The day marks 75 years since India freed itself from British colonial rule in 1947. Joining Hochul in the celebration was the Consul General of India, Rondier Jaiswell, and other officials, including Queensborough President Donovan Richards Jr. Hogel noted she is the first New York governor to officially celebrate Indian Independence Day, marking a historic move by the first female governor of the state. Noting the American dream, Hogel said, quote, This community, this Indian community, has become such an important part of that fabric. And as your governor, I wear that diversity with great pride. Namaskar. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, it is so great to be here today. And I do want to acknowledge uh, this celebration. We are so honored to have the Council General of India in our presence, who you'll be hearing from shortly, Randir Jaiswal. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, also, Deborah, thank you and everyone at this Queen's Museum. I've been here many times uh, to make significant announcements, particularly those who are announcements that help the immigrant community. This is a place that just draws us together, and I thank you for all you've done here. Also, we are joined by a great friend of mine, long-standing friend, and that is our borough president. Donovan Richard is doing a phenomenal job here. Thank you. Our district attorney, Melinda Katz, who uh, made sure that I knew every corner of this borough uh, and continues to this day. And, of course, uh, wonderful representatives of the Indian American community, uh, State Senator Kevin Thomas, I want to recognize him. Uh, Assembly member Jennifer Rajkumar, I want to thank her for joining us here today. Ane Paul, County Legislator from Rockland County. David Weppert has joined us here, I want to welcome him as well. And Council Member Shekhar Krishnan, we just uh, had some dinner together at the Jackson Diner, which is great. And uh, the Snayart group, I want to thank them for just making us feel so uh, spiritually uplifted by having that be beautiful music this morning. And we're here to celebrate Indian Independence Day. I know you know that, but uh, I also know that this is a chance for us to acknowledge the incredible diversity of our city overall and our state and the many, many contributions of the Indian American community here. And we're so lucky here in New York to have so many Indian Americans representing our levels of government. You know, there are many firsts. And to the community that was long underrepresented in our society, that those barriers have been broken. And so they're making incredible contributions to our civic life. So I want to thank, again, as I mentioned, the trailblazing Indian Americans in this room. We are proud that nearly 400,000 Indian Americans call New York home. Uh, more than half of them in New York City, New York State, they're spread all over from my hometown upstate to uh, this borough of Queens, but uh, most of them are right here in New York City. And these are the leaders, uh, the doctors, the scientists, the engineers, the business people, the attorneys, the artists, the writers, the restauranteurs, the shop owners. Uh, they really do create this, this beautiful fabric and so many contributions. It really makes New York fab fabulous and so vibrant. And as I mentioned, you know, we think about the pandemic, so many Indian American healthcare professionals, from doctors on down to those frontline nurses, they showed up, they displayed courage, they were there when we needed them, and they literally saved lives. So let's recognize those as well. Uh, and of course, you keep us well fed with amazing. I have to admit, I have a, I'm happy to admit, I have a husband who lives far away. He lives on the other side of the state. I see him on weekends, and uh, whenever I come home, he gets uh, Indian food takeout because he knows it makes me happy. We have the, uh, the wonderful food, and we just break bread together, and uh, we're always thinking of how significant this culture is. Also, you know, this gives us a chance to reflect on history, a chance to talk about and celebrate uh, the celebrations of life, but also the struggles. You know, this, uh, the journey to America had many struggles, and many came back as far as the 1800s, Indian Americans discovering this world, but it really wasn't until a century later when America got rid of those national origin quotas and we could really open up the doors, you know, the quotas in place of the 60s. So the real opportunities came in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and that's why we're so excited to see so many new, new Americans uh, coming here from India. And also, you know, we are just not celebrating the American dream. People in search of the American dream, many came here, like my grandparents left great poverty in a small island called Ireland. 
uh, and they had to leave. Their parents told them, there's no life for you here. We cannot afford to literally feed you, and they had to come to this country. So, so like so many, came here in search of, yes, the American dream, but it's what I call the New York dream. It's even sweeter. It's more beautiful. It's more diverse. And this community, the Indian community, has become such an important part of that fabric. And as your governor, uh, I wear that diversity with great pride. And I've been to many, many Diwali celebrations and India Republic Day celebrations, but I'm very proud to be the first governor of the state of New York to officially celebrate Indian independence. <laughs> very first. And so, so this marks 75 years since India freed itself from the colonial yoke and people were able to start on that path toward true democracy. And as I mentioned from the very beginning, it was difficult. And I don't think the history books correct, correctly tell the story of the over a million deaths and the forced displacement of over 12 million people. It was the largest mass migration in modern history at the time. And we don't talk about that. We don't talk about the pain and the loss that was uh, endured to create the world's largest democracy. So I know for some, the wounds are still fresh. You know, the realization that what their parents and grandparents had to endure to have that elusive concept known as freedom and democracy. But they never stop persevering, persevering and fighting. And in the United States, so we stand firm with that same shared uh, understanding of what it's like to reject colonial rule, uh, to embrace democracy, and to foster our shared democratic values of, of inclusion, pluralism, equality, freedom of speech, and of course, freedom of religion. So these are the values that bind us together. Uh, India, United States of America, it is shared, and we learn from each other. We also learn from celebrating the many languages and the religions, uh, countless, almost too many to count how many religions uh, spoken by the 1.2 billion people. But it's also just a statement of a, a community rising up, a world rising up and leaders who inspired others, like Gandhi and Nehru. I mean, those are names we do learn about in our schools, about what struggle means and about, about the peaceful embrace of democracy, what that's all about, nonviolence. And those are words that are still spoken about today. Uh, Dr. King was uh, uh, frequently quoting these great Indian leaders who inspired him to learn what nonviolence was all about. So th this is what we value here today. We celebrate this, our people, our values, our democracies. And whether the journey began back in 1776, like the United States of America, or in 1947, uh, the road to building a democracy always has been long and hard. And we strive toward a more perfect union. And we know what lies ahead, the great opportunity to say that this is a place. This is a place where people have gathered. And they bring their beautiful languages, their religion, the culture, the music, the celebrations. And because of that, I cannot imagine what New York State, New York City would be like without this. Uh, this is a cornerstone of what I embrace and cherish about being governor of this incredibly diverse state and the Indian Americans who found their way here and have made us even better than we would have been. I celebrate that today. So, so I continue to celebrate this. Uh, we have a, a opportunity to you know, break bread together, to talk about our shared commitment to building back this state in the aftermath of the pandemic. It hit us hard, but I know that pulling together uh, as one people now, as one people united in a love of democracy, that we will continue to do great things. And so I thank you for being here. I say uh, glory to India, Jay Hind, and also uh, let's, let's celebrate by bringing up our, our Council General, and I want to give him a proclamation. Uh, Council General Jay Zwell, on behalf of myself and the people of New York, I'm here to declare that New York's strength is the diversity of our people. Many, much of this is rooted in India, and we have a long tradition, and therefore I will continue to officially proclaim August 15th, 2022 as India Independence Day. Let's